Welcome aboard, Bill Satora from Microlumina, and very excitingly, we'll talk about soon his railroad kits, which is uh, the latest venture for for your for you and your family. He can be found at this point on his website, microlumina.com. That's M-I-C-R-O. L-U-M-I-N-A, and also the same at Facebook, and we'll talk about websites and Facebook a little bit later about Railroad Kit. Thanks for taking the time out away from your family and coming and chat, chatting with me at MRT tonight. Well, thank you, and thanks, uh, thanks for having me. I'm really interested in your history and how you, you got within into, into model railroading, so can you talk to, uh, through that with us a little bit? Well, sure. Uh, I, uh, when I was... A kid, we didn't have any Lionel sets, but uh, I have uh, 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 a couple brothers, they're twins, that are nine, nine years older than I am, and they had the first uh, uh, HO Tyco set, and uh, it, I think I, I kind of had it handed down, uh, I don't know if they knew that or not, uh, but uh, Whenever uh, they got older and, and lost interest in it, they were in high school, and uh, my dad had, had more time. He got into the model railroading and uh, set up a, a four by eight uh, platform, and that's what got me started. And he we ran the the trains that my brothers had, and uh, that's what got me started in it, and. Sure. Um, Enjoyed that for a while, and then as I got older and uh, you know discovered cars and girls, uh, as we do, as got we out, do. Yeah, and, and and got out of it for a while. Yeah, yeah. And and later in life, uh, after the 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 kids came and uh, got on their ways, and I had more time for the hobby, uh, I got back into it. Lovely, lovely. So, what are your? It's quite interesting, most. Most of the American gentlemen that I've spoken to so far, obviously they go down the, the Lionel route mm-hmm. regarding uh, the American flyer and the like seems to be the, yep. the institution over there around the Christmas tree and it um, grows from there. So at this point in time, take away Microlumina and we'll talk about railroad kits a little bit later. Um, mm-hmm. What other modeling interests do you have when you have time by the sounds of it? Uh, I had pretty much... Anything, uh, you know how? Whenever you, you, the sound that a plastic kit made whenever you shook the box. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. If ever, if ever I got a present at Christmas or in birthday and it made that sound, I mean, I knew I had something good. Yeah. Uh, cause I just love, I just love building models, all yeah, different kinds. Models. The only thing I never got into were like the, um, uh, the monster, the monster models. I never. Right. Yeah, the figures and stuff like that. I, right. I like things that uh, that moved, spaceships, uh, cars, trucks, boats. Uh, pretty much, I never got into radio control. Yeah. A uh, little bit of the model rockets. Got yeah. into that. Well, whenever kids were little, we built rockets and sent them up. Oh, nice. And yeah. uh, had, a, had a good time with that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, after a while, I came back to the, the railroading, and I always liked... Uh, seeing the detailed scenery and the structures. I, I wasn't interested in operations and, and, and that kind of stuff. Sure, sure. And, and so it was more like the, the art, the artistry that goes into, you know, recreating uh, the, the structures and the scenery. That's oh, what nice. really got me yeah, back okay. in. Lovely, lovely. So it's yeah, it's definitely a passion of mine. I'm, I think that's the beauty of model railroading. You can... You, it can take you in different directions depending on how you feel on the day almost as well sometimes. So yep. I'm sort of into a little bit of the operations side of things. I'm dabbling with that, but I also like the hyper-detailing of, of buildings and um, and the scenery and the like. So I think that's what's... Um, I really want to I really want to make a couple model boats. <laughs> yeah. Or ships. So. so HO boats or ships, I should say? Uh, well, there's, there's a, a Titanic model that needs to put together yeah, like and, a, uh, yeah. and that's, a, that's a story unto itself there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, cause they're the, the, the people that are into modeling the Titanic are just like the people that are into modeling, you know, right. some of the, uh, uh, the prototypers. Yeah. And, I that's mean, crazy. You see the, the, the fights that erupt on 
on Facebook. <laughs> it's, it's something else. Yeah. Sit back and enjoy the ride, so to speak. So I recently yeah. did a HO uh, resin ship. It was some I, 20, I like in, that. Yeah, 22 inches long or something, I think it was. And mm-hmm. the rigging on that, oh, God, my goodness, I just did my head in towards the end. And, and then I recently chatted to a, a bloke out of India called Gustav Chatterjee, who does um, all scratch building and end scale. And he, mm-hmm. he built a, a Blackbeard sloop in 1 to 72 scale, which is pretty well double O scale for um, mm-hmm. a little bit bigger than HO. And the, the rigging on that was just phenomenal, phenomenally mm-hmm. detailed. And he, when I was talking to him, it was actually, everything was actually worked. So he could put the sails up and down, he could tension the sail, he could put the jibs up, and it was just, oh. um, it was just mind-blowing what, what this gentleman had done. And he, it was all scratch built. So <laughs> it was mm-hmm. just unbelievable. But so... Railroad kits, mm-hmm. um, f- formerly of Jimmy Deegan, Dignan, I should say. Talk us through of railroad kits. I'm only a newbie to the whole craftsman kit scene, um, as we sort of spoke about before. It's a, it's quite an awesome little, well, not a little. It's quite a large community. Um, seems to be everyone's more than happy to to show their wares, help each other out with how they're building them, how they weather them how not to do it in my, my case when I try building them. But um, Jimmy's name, as well as Jeff Grove, as we spoke about before, came up very, very regularly. So he seems to be, oh, not the powerhouse is probably the incorrect phrase, but he's more, almost like between him and George Celios and a few others, almost like the, the father of father figure of craftsman kits and now... He's moving aside and he's now sold on the business to yourself. So that's obviously very exciting, I would think, from your point of view, to because it's quite a, a well, um, well-known well brand. So can you talk us through how, obviously, the, how the acquisition came about and, and moving forward with it, I suppose? Well, heck, that would go back to probably the first uh, Craftsman Structure Expo, Yep. That was held in Mansfield, Massachusetts. And I think the first one was in 2007, and uh, and it was um, Jimmy and Scott Mason and Doug Doug Fiscali, sure. uh got together um, and kind of kicked kicked that the idea off yep. and drew me. I remember driving up there and uh, it was a nice fall day and yeah, yeah. Uh, the trees look beautiful <laughs> it was yeah, a, yeah. like my first road trip by myself to uh, uh after being married and uh so uh went to uh the the craftsman show met yeah. a lot of really great people there yeah yeah and uh it was just i don't know i i could say it's magical you know but that's yeah. that's kind of weird but it was it was really really neat and yeah, yeah. i got to know uh jimmy a, a little bit i mean he's not a local person uh, sure uh and and scott and, and many of the other folks and um and i guess it just kind of you know we, we would communicate we joke and kid a lot and, yeah yeah and the, you know, the, the, the circle of friends grew and grew yeah and um until you know recently, uh, I looked at you know one, our, one, one of uh, Jimmy's posts on Facebook that said he was shutting down railroad kits, and my heart kind of sunk when I yeah. read that. Sure. And um, I really felt sad. Jimmy is a person I expect, I uh, respect and admire yeah. tremendously. Definitely, um, definitely. And you know, to you know, when I think you know, when I wake up in the morning, you know, or I, or I think I'm having a really bad day, and I think like yeah, you know, yeah. it could be a, a lot worse. And uh, and, and to, to think what he's, I don't know, it's it just he's he's a great great fellow. And sure, um, sure. like I said, admire him a lot. Saw the the post, it it, it really kind of you know made me concerned, and and I yeah. I, I sent him a, an email and I said, hey, what's up? And, and he told me that uh, you know basically it's he wanted to spend more time with his family and sure. uh, build a, you know 
built his own railroad. He had the that middle division, and she ended up selling to to somebody uh, in Asia, I believe. Right. Um, okay. And uh, so he wanted to start another railroad, uh, model railroad in his house, and sure. uh, wanted to make room for it. And uh, and so he wanted to get out of the the kit business and uh, the. Uh, the the casting business as well i think the casting business was taking up most of the space and most of the time yeah, of his okay. operation and it was and it was like uh, basically i said how much and he came back with a figure and i said okay yeah, yeah okay <laughs> i mean i didn't even you know i guess i just said oh well, how about this uh, but uh, now he's a, he's a square shooter uh, yeah. a straight shooter and um and so I just thought, well, you know, I think I can make it work. Yeah, sure. And uh, I'm, my degree is in mechanical engineering, and uh, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm used to manufacturing, so I figured, well, maybe I could, you know, <laughs> apply some of the, the stuff I do on a daily basis uh, when I get home. <laughs> yeah. Like, like an idiot, huh? <laughs> so just what I want to do when I get home is do more work. <laughs> it's but, more engineering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So but, uh, yeah, go. On. I, I just uh, I, I was interested in it, and uh, my wife Lisa is extremely supportive, and oh, good. Uh, good. that's another story right there because I, I ended up bringing her along to after I had the the micro. That's a like, I'm I'm going off on another tangent, but it's a good one here because uh, she ended up really liking. Uh, going on the train shows and yeah. um, you know being bare, she, she'd write up the sales, and uh, she got to know uh, some of the other vendors and uh, their wives, and we ended up having our own little group that would get together oh, at train shows. And we had a great time, uh, yeah. and it was really really nice, and and so she's behind us a hundred percent, yeah, and. Um, uh, and a real driving force, uh, and I'm, I'm lucky to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, that was—that's basically it. That yeah, I, okay. you know, I, I saw that you know Jimmy wanted to get out of it, and yeah. uh, I figured you know might as well have somebody that's kind of you know in the, you know, in the in the circle in the group, or you yeah. know, someone that 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 I don't know. <laughs> so someone. That, I don't want to say no. I don't like. I, I, I'm not the kind that likes to blow my own horn or anything like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. not known like, like a lot of other because I'm into lighting and, and soldering, and nobody wants to solder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, um, I've built only two of his kits. Um, uh, which ones are they? There's one I actually won in a little competition on. Uh, Wiley's HO Scale Customs podcast. Where was it? Let's see if I can bring find him. This is the beauty of editing. I can be able to take this out. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Another part of the deal, is there's uh, some kit lines that Jimmy has that uh, he really has been sitting on because... Uh, it would require an awful lot to get it uh, kicked off again, right? And uh, that I should be able to get later on in the year get yeah. uh, get that started up. There's a there's a lot of lot of castings, <clears throat> other than yeah. George Selius's castings, um, that he has that would really really be uh, nice ones to to market. Sure. Um, I think yeah, you'd be right. I think there's a lot of people out there that. Uh, would like to to see some of those re-released because some of them are quite expensive when you look at eBay and the like. Uh, what people are demanding for some of these kits. Um, well, yeah, but even to redo them, I could yeah. still see they really wouldn't. Uh, you know, they'd probably be about the same price. Yeah. When you when you when you consider the price point sure. of uh, an upscale craftsman kit. Yeah. True. True. But I suppose the beauty of that there's more out there as well. So. Right. Um, so, yeah, now Denim Feeds is the one that I built. And what was the other one? Fisher Fuels I built as well. So, There's just, some nice little kits there. Oh, they're, they're beautiful little kits. Um, Fisher, sorry, Denim Feeds was the first craftsman kit that I ever built. 
and I did a quick little video on it, my my journey on how to do it for my for Facebook, uh, sorry, um, YouTube, I should say, and I loved it, and it's probably what got me into it. Um, I never built a craftsman kit before, so I really uh, enjoyed it, it, building with wood. So the, the J Keen supply kit, I include that in the clinic in a box, and right. uh, when one of the uh, light bites shows. Uh, the process of lighting up that, that kit. It's a nice little kit to kind of get your feet wet on and yeah. to learn a couple of techniques. Yeah, sure. That's for lighting. That, yeah, no, that's definitely a, a great little kit. So I'm assuming you're going to keep the same website um, from Jimmy or you're going to develop another one or just slowly put your own flair into it, so to speak, or uh, the, I'm not let really, the dust settle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dust really does have to settle. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the company that you know it's it's listed, you know, as far as tax goes and everything like that is Microlumina, and yeah. uh, and so I would be uh, acquiring the railroad kits part of it sure. and of of Jimmy's. So and there's a you know a, a domain name that goes along with that. Yeah. And so I guess really what it's going to end up for for a while is that you know whenever you you type in railroadkits.com, you'll end up at Microlumina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, but that's going to be changed, you know, so that you'll you'll know that you didn't get to the wrong spot. Sure. So the sure. the Microlumina page is going to be updated. The Railroad Kits page is going to yeah. uh, change as well, and yeah. um, and it'll all come together. So it's that's in take a little time. sort of in September is when you're looking at doing uh, the the, the, the tri- is going. To, the, for, yeah, the priority transition. is going to be be getting the castings going. Yeah, uh, there's a, a, a demand for the castings, and, yeah. uh, and and that's going to be a project unto itself. When, yeah. uh, I, I was up, I was visiting uh, Jimmy last weekend, and got my eyes on uh, all the molds. There's got to sure. be over a thousand. There's got to oh, be wow. over a thousand molds. And, wow. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> There's there's kind of a logic into how George uh, made them, okay. um, but as his operation grew and as time went on, you know he used molds from older kits uh, to get some okay. components. Yeah. Um, so the uh, if you want to put a, a casting set together for one of his later kits, yeah. it might use a lot of different molds and yeah. it some of those molds might might be like one item out of a mold that yeah. has a lot of other items yeah, that okay. are on it so you, sure. everything else goes back into the melting pot yeah, or okay. it gets used for something else right. uh, okay. so uh, and uh, i also would like to kind of uh, uh get everything you know cataloged and yeah uh that's going to take some wh- a while but yeah yeah. Uh, and also, uh, but uh, some of the other craftsman kit manufacturers uh, possibly, you know, make some casting sets for them uh, sure. if they if they're so inclined. You know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, if I have a, a mold that's custom, uh, that's dedicated to them, yeah. and uh, then it would make it, it, it would help them, it would help yeah. me, everybody would benefit from it. Yeah, definitely. Keep the cost down. Yeah, and I think that's where. <laughs> You know, we touched on it before, just, you know, the, the community that sits in behind this. Everyone seems to help each other out. So oh, yeah. um, whether it's cutting or making making moulds, I remember having a conversation with Jeff Grove saying, do you have these types of castings? Are you going to do them? And he goes, no, because Jimmy does those and I don't want to take away from him. So it's just that type of what we call here in Australia mateship, so to, so to speak, um, which is like just another slang word for community i suppose uh, that we that we yeah. use over here um but people little... might not like me as much as they like jimmy though <laughs> <laughs> oh, i don't think so i've never met jimmy I tr- I've only, yeah hey. I, I tried getting him on a few times um but obviously he had his layoff when the the virus hit in hard over in the states and sort of missed my opportunity there but that that's fine so in regards to the castings because you're right because the castings I've only done limited of them, but they are ultra detailed, easy to color, easy to weather. That's what I'm sort of finding. Um, they do. It's like lighting. It's just adding that 
next little bit of realism to a scene. Mm -hmm. um, it might just be um, an oil, you know, an oil drum on sitting on the side of a building, like in the case of Fisher Fuels, or some rubbish bins sitting at the front door of a of a premises. But it just it's just adding that next level of detail. It's just I don't know what it is. It's just something so simple, probably not simple to make, but simple to to add to the to the model. It's just phenomenal. Well, and if you if you travel uh, a little bit, if you you know maybe have a vacation spot that you go to regularly, uh, and you have a little kit that you take with you or a toolbox, yeah. uh, you know painting yeah. castings can be a relaxing yeah uh, definitely little, little project, and and it doesn't require yeah. taking a whole lot of thought, uh, a lot of equipment, you know, yeah. a few brushes, a few paints, yeah, and no definitely another. So Another fellow I admire uh, um, is a Gator Dave Dave Myers, uh, right. okay. who, who sells the the Gator foam and yep. uh, is a Jeff Grove's cousin. Oh, but okay. he's a right. he's a very artistic fella, and um, uh, vacationed with him, and I'm just amazed he'll that he'll do a lot of his painting. And I got, you know, so many paints. I'm looking at them right now, whether they're Vallejo or Reaper or, you know, those little little bottles. And, yeah. And, you, you know, we kind of acquire a lot of lot of equipment, a lot of tools, a lot of paints. Yeah. And yeah. the artist that Dave is, he has like a bottle of white paint, a bottle of black paint, some primary colors, three yeah. primary colors and maybe a few secondaries. Yeah. And that's all he takes and and he just goes to time it's amazing uh, amazing okay. what he gets accomplished and 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 jeff his cousin i'm a constantly <laughs> amazed by how fast he can he can make uh yes uh, build a kit he yeah. can really build a kit well and build it quickly yeah. i i on the other hand uh well it takes forever no you're I got. I'm literally looking over my right shoulder here. I got Nickerson's Landing of Jeff's that I'm building for a, a, a port scene that I'm doing, and then onto Eagles Landing, and I'll get them when I get done. <laughs> got so many other things going on right now as well. So, um, so obviously the acquisition of the the castings. There's there's plenty still that are physically cast that can still get sold on, or is there a limited there, supply? There is. Those? There are some pretty neat resin casting. I saw I saw the molds yeah. uh, that uh, definitely need to be uh, brought out. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, what what type of castings we'll out of interest? There. Pardon me. What type of castings out of interest? Um, some uh, one in particular was a, a workbench that was long, so uh, that okay. if you're yeah detailing a roundhouse or something large like that right. you can get a lot of of interior detailing done with one piece oh wow uh, okay yeah so i mean that's that's one um yeah. and there's there's many more <laughs> yeah enough fair enough so all right i'm gonna ask a bit of a down the down the road or a futuristic question here so once the dust sort of settles we're in the groove regarding railroad kits. What 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 would you really like to do? What what's what's number one on the agenda once everything settles down? Website sorted, all the taxation, everything else sits in behind. What 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 do you really what is there a structure that you want to look at doing or? Uh, probably, yeah, definitely. I, I can think of off the, off the top of my head. There's one in particular, which is a nice little small structure. Yeah. Uh, that. Um, uh, not too far from, well, a couple hours from where I live. It's no longer there. Yeah. It was an interesting little gas station, and um, you know, that's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and and I'm as far as you know, manufacturing kits. I'm an, I'd be a newbie, and yeah. so uh, I know I could probably get a lot of help from from the community. Definitely. Um, yeah. But um, you know, and I, and we don't. Uh, you don't want to put out something that somebody already at. You, you want to put yeah. out something different something different and, uh, yeah and and you don't want to get uh, too crazy that um yeah that is going to cost you too much to make that sure, uh, you, sure. you end up you know, not getting anything out of yeah it. sure sure and obviously that um 
part of this acquisition comes with the with Jimmy's laser as well, or you need to purchase a laser? No, I'll need to get a laser, yeah, but a laser. Uh, part of the deal is the spin caster, though, so right. I'll have uh, that. Okay. So the spin caster, excuse my ignorance, is obviously for uh, the casting side of things, I would think, wouldn't it? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, that's very exciting. Um, and regarding some of these kits that are, they're going to keep going, I suppose, more than anything. So there's obviously a few, obviously not every kit that he's got, he's ever built, but some of the ones on the website are still going to be available moving forward and in limited runs, I'm assuming, or once they sold out, that's sort of it at that point, or what What are you looking at doing there? I, I haven't even considered limited run stuff yet. I'll yeah. just, uh, I'll leave that to Doug uh, and yeah. Foscale kits sure. and uh, and uh, to Jeff. Yeah, uh, Kenny Crump from uh, Casey's workshop. Casey. Casey's, yes. yeah. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll leave that in their capable hands. Yeah, sure, I sure. I don't know what I just broke, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't something too. No. But uh, no, there's. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it uh, to leave it to them. Yeah, and sure. uh, I'll think about. Uh, you know, I'm just starting out. I don't want to yeah. get. Uh, Get ahead of myself no fair enough fair enough so time's ahead for you that's definitely a big learning curve um yep. i would think learning how to because i i wouldn't even know where to start how to use a laser or make castings so i'd take my hat off to you in regards to to that so and then that still was interesting it's it's another thing that i yeah, I got interested in. I didn't know whether I should build my own laser or, or get something ready to run. And I figured, oh, yeah, man, yeah. maybe I better get something ready to run so I can get get off the ground a little bit sooner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've had I've had offers. You know, Jimmy said he'd cut for me. Uh, Jeff Adam, yeah. uh, I, uh, anybody who's got capacity has, has offered. You know, yeah. said, hey, I'll cut for you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's there's always there's always that. Yeah, it's just that comes back to that community, doesn't it? It's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So, it's just when I come home from the day job, I have to make sure I have enough energy uh, to. Oh, that's right. To... <laughs> and you don't want to make it mundane or a drain on yourself either, as you're not going to enjoy it, and then you know if you're not going to enjoy it, it's not going to get done. So because you're going to feel that you, you know. It's uh, more of a drain on your day and your your health and everything else. So I suppose you do. That's that fine line, isn't it? Between you know, yeah, modelling is I'm meant looking to be fun. At it. So I'm looking at a new 3D printer right now uh, that I need to put together, yeah. uh, which uh, which is the SLA that uh, uses the resin. Right. Uh, and um, my hopes with that are to make some uh, masters uh, to make uh, new castings right okay yeah so, that's fantastic a lot oh. going on yeah all right so you so you 3d print them first to then make the the negative to to do the casting okay yeah cool i see how that's done so all right well micro we'll mm -hmm. we'll start we'll start chatting about uh sounding about that so can you tell me the history behind the company and sort of how it came about the who what's wins how's and why you sort of got into it hmm. it's it's a good question there uh, when i started getting back into it um uh, a friend of mine uh don reed he's passed away he was a great great fellow uh here in the pittsburgh area sure. and he had built one of george Sellius's kits uh i think it was hooligans alley and really did a phenomenal job and uh, I connected with him uh, through another fellow, uh, another local fellow, uh, Jim Sacco from uh, City Classics. A lot of people are familiar with City Classics. Uh, it's uh, the uh, you know the, the the urban type models that uh, you know, multiple story, four or five story buildings. So there's all some other stuff. Sure. Uh, and he's he's a local fellow, and we would meet for lunch, and. Um, and I, and I met the, the other, this Don Reed fellow, and we went to a uh, one of the local jamborees. Our, our NMRA division has sure. what they call jamboree every every year. And I was looking at, uh, sat in on some clinics and, and things, and um, and it was just 
interesting. Sometimes I just like like listening to see how people present and and make things interesting. And sure. I noticed that uh, well, it wasn't so much in the clinics, but in a lot of the articles that I was reading, uh, there was a it seemed like there was a tendency to make things more complicated than they needed to be, <laughs> and. Uh, and that's what got me started here. Why are they making it so complicated? It's specifically when they were explaining LEDs and getting into Ohm's law and, and Thevenin's theorem or whatever. You know, it's yeah. really crazy stuff. And uh, I thought, you know, it's not all that difficult and it's kind of fun and you can, yeah, you can have yeah. a lot of fun with it. And uh, and that's what got me started in doing the presentations. And yeah. and I would do a presentation and. And I never thought I would get into doing that. And I, it's like so it never really got me nervous. I thought yeah, maybe the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I had fun with it and uh, asked questions. And and if people had the answer, I'd throw a tootsie roll at them. Yeah. And, and they got a <laughs> kick out of that. Yeah. Um, and, That'd be like and, a, anyway. like like hen's teeth these yeah. days. If it's anything like what tootsie rolls are like over in our part of the world, so. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I had uh, I enjoyed doing that, and, uh, and then I got asked to do clinics in other areas, and sure. that required that I had to drive, you know, uh, stay at a hotel sometimes, and uh, I figured, you know, geez, I, I should find some way of, of making up the expense of my travels, and uh, so I started with the microlumina. And it's basically it's reselling products from engineering. Um, they're located uh, in uh, on the west coast sure. of the of the, st of the states. Um, another person you could talk to, Tim Anderson, who owns engineering. Um, and uh, they were selling, you know, the, the lighting products and um, and lighting simulator products, and and so I resold some of those. And uh, added some of my own, and sure. um, and and he had a kit for making gooseneck lights, and and I sat down and, and really started making my own and developing my own techniques and, and explaining how I did that on on some of my clinics, and sharing that information, and and so I mean that's basically how microlumina evolved. Okay. And, and now we're we're going to take another step. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We'll get. We'll definitely get to that that in a sec. Um, now, I suppose it's quite interesting. If so, you've sort of microlumina sort of came out of more of a, a need more than anything a pain a pain point. I suppose for for modelers out there. So, as you as you know, I spoke about just before. I don't know. It seems to be particularly interior lighting um, and lighting. You know, to the just to the exterior, you talk about gooseneck lighting and the like. That seems to be, to a certain degree, sort of underutilized. I think um, I appreciate, depending on the type of interior lighting you are going to do, that means you need to possibly hyper detail the interior. And a lot of a lot of people are not into that. But I know there's just something about you see a night scene and it's just a just a basic, you know, glow within the within a, a structure. That sort of just mm -hmm. bring, brings that structure to life, I, I think. Well, um, it, it's kind of like the, the old moth to the flame yeah. uh, analogy. Uh, it just it draws you in. That was one of the, the, the points that I made in, uh, in the clinics was that yeah. you know, the lighting can draw you in. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can keep it simple yeah. uh, or you can get, get, uh, go all out and yeah. do the interiors and yeah and have a lot going on i think that the key is is not to over illuminate so what i mean by that is the intensity of the light because mm -hmm. we've all done it you put a light in there and it just shines straight <laughs> straight through a plastic structure so it's quite interesting mm -hmm. that obviously it's better to think of about your lighting before you build the structure because if you need to you know i use like a, a thick black paint or something similar on the inside on right. basic structures so mm -hmm. it doesn't um glow the whole the whole building, so yeah, to speak, but yeah, you don't want the walls to glow. You yeah. don't want light to leak out from little little uh, corners, corners or yeah. under walls. So, yeah. um, we'll have a quick look at your website now. 
um, when it comes up. There we go. So obviously you can't see it there, Bill, but uh, the, the, the page I'm looking at is... Let's make sure I get the right one. Is the Light Bytes. So you've got um, various little PDF documents on mm -hmm. various aspects. So I'll just talk about a few of them um, and sort of pick your brain a little bit because you talked about, and it's quite interesting you, you bring that up about um, about Ohm's Law and people just overcomplicating things regarding um, the use of, of LEDs. So for, for everyone else out there, that um, hopefully they can see what I've got on screen there, um, the different size... LEDs to start with the old traditional sort of bell shaped LED right the way through to the um, the surface mounts that I'm sort of getting into of late as well when I try to solder those. But so you talk about obviously the different types, uh, how to identify the positive and negative because they're um, polarity sensitive as you bring up in this right. um, this little document as well so obviously I won't read this whole document I do but I will put some links below to these documents because they are quite little good little ready reckoners to get people into this side of the hobby and it's as you say it's not all that difficult um, so you, you also you talk about some mathematical equations here which is quite interesting um, obviously I, I'm Maths is not my strong point, but and mm -hmm. when to use a, a res resistor and, and when not to. So, I suppose where we're going with this, if, if someone looking in, looking in, going, oh, I'd like to get into lighting, but then we start talking about it's not overly complicated maths, but um, some people might not be very interested in that at all. Is there any sort of advice you can give with someone who wants to set up a string of three or four LEDs, um, regardless of type, how they might go about doing that just with some basic um, electronics and, and resistors? Uh, what I like to, to tell people is to, you know, download those PDFs, those yeah. light bite articles. It doesn't cost anything, and there, there's some decent information in, in there to get someone started off. Uh, you could go the resistor route, uh, or you can use the, the current limiters, which I like to think of as uh, uh, magical or automatic resistors. They, yeah. they take the mathematics out. Yeah. And, uh, but it still helps to know what's going on. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, if you have a 3-volt power source and a 3-volt LED, it's, and you connect it the right way, it, the LED's not going to blow up. Correct. It's yeah. not going to let out the magic smoke or anything. Um, <laughs> so. But uh, it, it's it's as hard as difficult as you want to make, make it. it. Sure. Uh, and it, it, you know, some people are totally adverse to it, and I, I wouldn't recommend. It. I'm not going to force anything on them. No. But if no. you're interested, and if someone's interested, you know, check out the articles. And yeah. Use the use current limiters. I have some uh, yep. kits that I sell that little sampler kind of things that yep. uh, make it easier. Uh, for someone who might just start off with a, a simple structure like uh, sure. like that, that the Keen building that I am yeah. showing right here, a little mock-up of it. Yeah, yeah. So I've got the the current limited up now. I've, it's something that, as I said, I'm not in regards to this side of electronics all that au fait, and it's something I'd heard of but never thought of even using for. I've always used... Um, uh, resistors for my LEDs mm -hmm. over the years, but I think I'm going to get back onto you after this and buy some more of these and see where I can source them. So, um, so talk us through the. the you, you, we briefly touched on the current limiters being an automatic uh, resistor as such, but I'm assuming there's some sort of limit to them depending on the value of uh, of the component. Would that be correct in saying, or model trains? Uh, we're, we're never going to get to that. That that threshold yes, so to speak the the rule of thumb with white leds which are the the kind that we use to light the structures is that they're basically a three volt dc device and they uh they use 20 milliamps of current and and that's where i, I don't you know, I, I hate to, to get things complicated in that but uh if you put the the LEDs in series, uh, the, the voltage drops add up, uh, but the current flowing through that series circuit is 20 milliamps. Uh, oh. 
or it needs to be 20 milliamps. Let me correct myself there. Um, so depending on the voltage that you have to work with, um, that determines how you're going to have to regulate the, the current sure. so that you keep that 20 milliamps going and uh, not much more or else you will burn out the LED. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, adding LEDs up, if you have, I, in fact, I have a, a one structure and it still works and it's probably 10, 12 years old. Yeah. I didn't use any resistors or any uh, current limiters in it. Uh, I just took three volt LEDs and yeah. put them, put group three of them together in a series circuit yeah. and, uh, and powered them with a nine volt nine battery. Volt batteries. So yeah. three, six, nine, you got nine volts in, you got the, they're, yeah. they're using up nine volts and sure. uh, actually they use a little bit more. So there's even a safety margin in there, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I don't recommend that because if I wanted to take that that model and put it onto a, a a layout that was running 12 volts or 24 volts for a lighting bus, then I would burn it up. Um, it's quite an interesting, and I've never heard it being explained in this way. Um, I've got the photos up now. Series and parallel bookshelves. So, talk us through the I suppose the theory behind what we're meaning here. Um, if if you look at a, a bookshelf or a bookcase, you have shelves in it. And each of those shelves is like a, a parallel circuit. And the books that you put on the shelves are in a series. Like sure. you could have, you know, Harry Potter 1, Harry Potter 2, Harry Potter 3, yeah. and so forth. I would have said encyclopedia, but no one knows what encyclopedias <laughs> are anymore. Just be a whole list of computers on there. So. <laughs> yeah, Just Google it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so uh, the, the books on the shelf are, are like the LEDs in series. And... Each uh, the whole bookcase assembly is like a uh, it could be a structure or it could be your you know your diorama, yeah. and uh, and you take and make the parallel circuits so that yeah. way you get more uh, more bang from your buck so to yeah. speak, yeah. Uh, uh, so that you can uh, use your power source more efficiently. Sure, uh, you get a little little wall work kind of thing that yeah. that puts out maybe uh, one amp. Um, yeah. You can you can uh, power a lot of LEDs off of that if you group them in series circuits. Yeah. But if you take just one resistor and one LED and and just put a bunch of those, you're going to run out of power a lot quicker because you're wasting a lot of that uh, that power on uh, uh, warming up a resistor. Yeah. Okay. Through the so, heat. Okay. So if you put a little planning into it. Um, uh, you, you'll learn. Uh, you'll get your more out of the, the, your power source. Sure, sure. So, I'm looking, scrolling down further. You brought up the, about the 12 volt um, wall wart, as you as they, they get called in your part of the world. Um, yeah. What, so what you, do you guys call? Uh, transformers, effectively. Yeah. Tra okay. wall, wall transformers or something similar. So. Yeah. I'm trying to get up with the lingo because obviously a lot of the gents I speak to are American, so I do apologise if I don't get it right. So, <laughs> so we're all talking about the same thing. So, so obviously, this is a classic example. I think the bookshelf as well is if you're going to do each shelf is powering a set of LEDs, whether it's a multi-level structure that you're building or different rooms within a structure. I suppose that would be the way. I'm just trying to associate the diagram back to how you might look at putting lights within 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 the structure so to speak so um so obviously I like that pic i was i was gonna say like that picture that you show right there you can yeah. see that there's one two three four five six shelves six shelves and then the bottom shelf is that lonely resistor and led yeah um because that resistor has to be sized for the voltage and yeah that led and it's uh it it kind of wastes the power a little bit. So we're basically what you're suggesting each each room effectively, and and, and so we'll talk about the first room, which is uh, the list of four LEDs, which obviously uses all the twelve volts, um, right, as we talked about before. So call, yeah, uh, that's what I call going commando. Going commando. I really don't recommend <laughs> it. I'm just I'm just showing that. It yeah. Can yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then obviously each. Each then has to use a current limiter, um, so to speak. 
Um, each each shelf except for the the bottom two. Yeah, except the bottom two. And obviously the beauty of these little current limiters as well, they're not all that uh, space. Well, they don't take a lot of space up, so they can just be about hidden anywhere. Um, no, above a window or something get... like I think you suggested um, for these, some of these circuits. So you can you can uh, they make a a through hole version, which would be like the, the kind of version that has the the wire leads on it. They also yep. make surface mount versions of it as well. Sure, sure. All right, Bill. So thank you so much for taking an hour out of your your busy day. Uh, um, you've got so uh, much going thank on. Thank you with... for having me. Yeah, railroad kits, and I look forward to buying some more kits from from you definitely in the near future once things get things up and running. Then definitely some mm -hmm. of the castings, because as I said, I've only done a limited number of them, and I've enjoyed everything about them. Um, painting them up, it's just um, they're a very easy little piece to sort of add a lot of detail and realism and just add just makes that model pop at the end of the day which is fantastic so thank you very much again um you're quite welcome thank you for having me yeah it's been great so i'll see you next time make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad techniques